this is Professor Jeff Wilkerson at Luther College providing you more introduction to the exercises in Astronomers as Observers and Experimenters, a laboratory manual for introductory astronomy classes uh, published by Kendall Hunt. Uh, so what we're going to talk about today is exercise five, observing with simple tools, but we're going to focus on observing with a uh, simple measuring strip, an angle measuring device. And we're going to really spend our time there because uh, the other exercises in this laboratory manual require you to use this measure angle measuring device, as do two of the three projects at the end of the laboratory manual. It's a very, very good tool. It's a very valuable tool. If you think about the celestial sphere as the inside of the sphere, the sky that's above us, we observe where things on the, are on the sky. We can point at one object and we can point at another object and the angle between them, it tells us the separation on the sky. So we measure angles all the time. We say the angle between uh, Jupiter and the moon, the angle between uh, 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 Regulus and Dana Bola in Leo, the angle between Betelgeuse and Rigel in Orion. Uh, so we're talking about how far is something from the North Celestial Pole, all of these things. These are angles that we're measuring on the, on the sky. And so we want to get good at measuring those angles. That's our, one of our easiest, simplest observations to make that actually yields some powerful results. And so we, we, we want to make a good angle measuring device. And as we talk about in the manual, the way to do that is to draw some, some lines on the board, for example, and then pace off a good known distance. Measure that off carefully. Hold your angle measuring device. There's your angle measuring strip. Uh, it's got good chalk all over it right there, so maybe you can see the chalk on there. Uh, and it's hold it out, and I hold it out at a, at a place that's comfortable. I want to be able to bring this back up, so I'm bringing it up like this uh, and be able to repeat it, because I'm going to have to do this. If I, if I hold it in here, I get an inaccurate measurement. If I hold it out extra far, I get an inaccurate measurement. So I want to get good at repeating this, bringing this up to where it's going to be comfortable for me to use all of the time. I'm going to take my thumb and my finger and my thumb and my finger and I'm going to place them on the lines right there and then I want to mark where those lines are. I can do it myself with a marker and then go grab the other one, make sure that marker stays aligned with it and mark it there or I can have someone help me out. So as I, as I align these things with the board, uh, I want to mark where those lines are. Now, what we know is when we look at something like this, if that distance is S, and this distance is r, and that angle is theta right in there, uh, we know that s is equal to r theta, or theta is equal to s over r, where theta is that angle. Uh, that's going to be the angle between those two lines that we have drawn on the board right there. Uh, it's going to be the angle that your strip's going to be measuring. And uh, s is the separation of these two lines on the board, and r is the distance you're paced away from those lines on the board. So r is your distance away. So you can measure uh, s and r and calculate theta. What we recommend, what I've recommended in the, in the lab book, but you can certainly do this differently if you want, is to, to select uh, theta since it's about 5 degrees, uh, but 2 degrees would be a good choice as well. Uh, and you can subdivide it, then get a ruler, and once you've measured, say, 5 degrees, if this is if this is on your if you've got two two points like this that are five degrees on your strip, then you go the same distance over. It's another five degrees and another five degrees and another five degrees, and then you can get a ruler and subdivide it in one degree chunks. Uh, so you can do one or two degree chunks out there. Uh, you want to try to make this as precise as possible. Now this only works as if theta is in radians. Remember that a full circle has 360 degrees, but it also has two pi radians. So you can do that division, 6.28 is 2 pi, 360 divided by 6.28 is going to give you 57.3 degrees per radian. So you can go in and you can say this is actually S is equal to R theta over 57.30 if theta in degrees. Okay, and so you could... Make, you could say, what do S and R have to be for me to get five degrees or two degrees or whatever I want on this strip? And so make your strip and test it. Go out and really test the heck out of your strip 
to see does it work? How big, how big a theta do I start to get an uh, inaccurate measurement uh, for S, for example, if I use this to measure the size of something by measuring my distance away from it and then measuring the angular size of the object, the theta, and then calculating back what the actual physical size is. How good is that depending on what the theta is? Is theta of 10 degrees better than theta of 5 degrees? Or, is, or do I get about the same results or worse results? Theta of 30 degrees? How does it compare to theta of 10 degrees or 1 degree? Um, and so you, you, you run into issues. You want to think about precision of measurement. How precise is this measurement? But you also want to think about uh, a bias. What bias are you building in at large angles, for example, uh, that causes you to overestimate or underestimate the size of the object? And so you want to really test this and think this thing through. But you can use this then to go out and measure on the night sky uh, the separation between <clears throat> two objects that you see. So you can hold this up. You can measure uh, your, two, your, your, your separation between, say, the moon and a couple of bright stars, and you're well on your way to project two uh, when you're doing that sort of thing. So this is what you're doing. R, remember, to make your strip, R is the distance you are away from the board, and S is the separation between those two. That's the angle right there. So it's the distance from your eyes to the board is that angle, and it's also going to be the angle right here. Uh, when you hold the strip up. So you hold the strip up and it's going to give you that angle as well. So you want to go out, make this strip, uh, test it, see how precise it is, how accurate it is. Accuracy is this concept of, is it giving you the right answer? Uh, precision is what's the uncertainty in the answer that, that it's giving you. So if it's not giving you the right answer, so it might be measuring all of your angles 10% large. So it might measure a 10 degree angle as 11 degrees and a 20 degree angle as 22 degrees. Uh, so that is a, a problem with the accuracy of the device. It's measuring the accuracy of the device and that leads to an observational bias as we might have talked about elsewhere. And so you want to you want to check for that in here. Uh, precision is just a flat out uncertainty because uh, of uh, trying to extrapolate between marks on your device, uh, for example, or your ability to get your arms back up to the same position every single time. And so uh, precision tells you how good a job you're able to do that. You might know, you might be absolutely accurate. 20 degrees is 20 degrees or 10 degrees is 10 degrees, but you might still have a plus or minus one degree or half a degree uh, is, is all you can do. You can only get to within a half a degree each time uh, because uh, uh, of your inability to reproduce those measurements or your inability, your inability to extrapolate between marks on here or something else. So, so this is what we want to do. Uh, take your time and take good care to measure, uh, do a good job ma making this angle measuring strip. And then I recommend you keep it. This is a piece of old uh, any plastic will work uh, or any other device. So if you can find some kind of plastic sheeting and cut it into a strip that looks about like the size and shape of a ruler like that, uh, that's a pretty good uh, angle measuring device that you can make. And you know we've used these in the in the night sky in the planetarium. We've used these and we use these with red flashlights. And so we don't want to mark these with red, or you can't see the red markings on there. Uh, black mark is good, but if you don't use a red flashlight, if you use a white light, um, then uh, white ambient light, then it doesn't matter what color you mark it with so much, maybe. Uh, but anyway, uh, go out and use this and, and hang on to it. You know, when I do this with, with students, uh, we make this in the first lab of the semester. That's the first thing we do is we make the angle measuring device. We go into the planetarium and we test it out on stars in the planetarium where we have some parallax issues with the stars on the sky, but we talk about that as well. We test it out uh, measuring things in the hallway and so on. And then uh, we got to hang on to it because we're going to use it two or three or four or five more times throughout this semester uh, for, for different exercises and projects. So that's your introduction to making an angle measuring device. I uh, hope it goes well for you. Uh, always mistrust your instruments. Always do your best job making your instruments. Always test them thoroughly. Always mistrust them and wonder if they're giving you uh, accurate and precise results. Good luck, everybody.